Ray J is the type of guy, I, shout out to the whole Norwood family, but Ray J, I'm gonna tell you how I think of you, <laughs> personally speaking. I think that Ray J is always up to something. Like he tries to fool you with that, you know, Brandy's little brother. You know, he's cute and he's very mannerable and he loves his mom and respects his dad. But it, in reality, Ray J is like a Jason Hoppy. Like, like the worst who ever did it, in my mind, in my mind. Miley Cyrus might be getting back with her ex. And I'm not talking Patrick Schwarzenegger. I'm talking her ex-fiance, Liam Hemsworth. He seems like a really calming force. I could be wrong, because looks can be deceiving. But he just, he just seems like a real decent man and a calming force. And in my mind, the reason that they, in my mind, uh, <laughs> which is crowded with all kinds of nonsense. <laughs> In my mind, the reason that they broke up to begin with is because of Miley. Because in my mind, all that twerking and jerking <laughs> was way too much for this nice young man to handle. In, 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 my, in my mind. <laughs> Nick Jonas is back on the market. The thing about Nick Jonas, I don't think that he has a wild side. Like, he doesn't seem like he'd be that interesting in a relationship. Just a nice boy from Jersey. And, there, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're looking for wildness, I don't think that you're gonna, even with the shirt up, and I, I don't, he's doing that for us to look at. I don't believe that that's really him. And I also don't believe that he's down with the swirl. I, in my mind, you know how there's certain people, <laughs> You know, look, don't be offended. We talk race all the time here. Look, in my mind, aren't there certain people that you never picture being in mixed relationships? Nick Jonas is one of those. I just picture him, and I also don't picture him being like with a starlet. You know, he'd just be with like a pretty girl um, who might be equally as, not boring, but. <laughs> Do you know what I'm, like, I'm not trying to offend. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, I hate this purple chair. It makes me do things. <laughs> First of all, I've been fighting all morning <laughs> with, with the glam squad. Because, you know, we're all in the room and, you know, wig is getting the wig together and, you know, the, the news is on and wardrobe is steaming this and, and makeup is doing me. And, you know, when you fight, you, he, he, but he never says don't talk. I, I'm like the worst with the makeup. I'm turning my head. He's following me with the pencil. I'm talking. You know what we're fighting about? Because apparently me and Wig are the only, one who or only ones who think that Marvin Gaye's family should get that seven point something million dollars. Oh. I don't know, I don't know what ear you're hearing from. Squint with your ear. It is so clear that Pharrell and um, Robin Thicke were dead wrong. And when I first heard Blurred Lines, I thought literally that they legitimately, you know, purchased the hook laid down modern words, and we had a jam that the whole world could get down to. Like, you don't just steal, uh, you know, music and not pay for it and think you're gonna get away with it. And I know what you're saying. Well, Wendy, The View has hot topics and all of a sudden you have hot topics. <laughs> well, in my mind, <laughs> in my mind, you know, because once we got the show, I'm, I knew that I wanted to do, anybody who knows me from radio, you know I've been yipping and yapping about people since forever. But I never called it anything. You know, it's, but you have, to, you have to label stuff on TV. Everything has to have a label. So I'm sitting and I'm watching TV. I'm like, what am I gonna call, you know, when I come out and talk about people? <laughs> and, you know, I'm looking and I see the view and, I'm just like, they just saved me a bunch of time. I don't even feel like they're no falling hot topics. But in my mind, the statute of limitations is over and Barbara's gone, so I got away with a caper. <laughs> you all believe every relationship that you see in magazines. For instance, Lupita and Common. Oh, the Twitterverse is on fire. They think that Lupita, the actress, is actually dating Common, the rapper. Well, excuse me, but they did go uh, see an off-Broadway play, and they went out for dinner, and I, in my mind, I bet you they hooked up. In my mind. 
But when you're a grown person and you hook up with somebody, it doesn't mean everybody's falling in love. It, sometimes it just means two Oscar winners want to have a good time. And remember, just last week I was telling you that he was seen out with his mom and his old girlfriend, or yeah, his mom and his old girlfriend, Serena Williams. In my mind, I secretly hope they get back together. I do. I'm not exactly sure that George Clooney is, should, should be the one that you ask for help with your love life. You know, he's just getting his own love life together right now. And it took him, what, 52? He's 52? It took him 52 <laughs> years to do that. But he and Sandra Bullock have been friends for over 20 years, back when neither one of them had two dimes to scrape together and nobody was casting them in nothing. Have you and your friend ever really done it? Oh. Oh. Sandra Bullock's a good-looking woman. Oh. She's also been very bruised and needy on those cold L.A. nights. <laughs> when, the, when the rain is falling and the wine is flowing and she calls her friend George and they've known each other since forever and George probably drops his basketball. Because in my mind, that's what he does with his friends. You know, they play basketball and drink beer and, and stuff. Um, drops his basketball and hot tails it over to Sandy. So I said Sandy. <laughs> and the fire plate, oh, excuse me, it's California. The fire pit is flickering. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, Sandra, go find your own man. Yeah. Don't ask, don't ask them all. I just wanted to share this little story with you. You know, once I had a Filipino trainer, this beautiful, beautiful girl. She was gorgeous and very talented as a trainer. But she my boyfriend. So he fired her. I just wanted to share that with you. There's the Filipino trainer, and there's the 28-year-old boyfriend, and there's the 60-year-old Madonna. <laughs> but I can see how this happened. Madonna's out of town. <laughs> Brohim is in the mansion. <laughs> the... The trainer is in the gym, which in my in mind is a part of the wing of the house. The maids are all gone. The thunder and lightning are going on. There's a fire in the fireplace. And she comes upstairs a little sweaty. And he comes out of the shower with a towel. And then, and then he's, and then she's to him like, I didn't know you were still here. I thought you went on tour with Madge. That's what they call her. <laughs> and then he says, no, we've been fighting. We fight all the time. Like, I've had it. I just needed a break. I couldn't go. And then she plops down on the couch. And she says, she says, I know what you mean. <laughs> Having these businesses with her and, you know, she wants it her way or nobody's way and she doesn't listen to suggestion and then he sits down on the couch but he sits so hard he plops and the... <laughs> <laughs> and the towel pops open and next thing you know boing, 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 boing. in my mind in my mind <laughs>
Kenya, Kenya went on Patty Stanger's Millionaire Matchmaker. The man that she ended up dating uh, happens to be him. He's in real estate and that he's a Princeton graduate. I was like, jackpot! <laughs> what? <laughs> jackpot! No disrespect, Kenya, but in my mind, I said, she'll do something to mess this up. She always does. <laughs> Which is why she's gorgeous and smart and 44, and even though she wants to be married with children, she's still single. You see what I'm saying? Michelle Obama is celebrating her 50th birthday today. Happy birthday. She also talked about plastic surgery in People magazine, and, and I'll tell you what she said. Women should have the freedom to do whatever they need to do to feel good about themselves. Right now, I don't imagine that I would go that route, but I've always learned to never say never. Yeah. Hashtag. I'm counting down the days till we move out of this godforsaken house <laughs> so I can become a private citizen again and get my work done. Yeah. In my mind, that's what she meant. In my, in my mind, that's what she meant. This morning, um, we found out that Plaxico Burroughs from the Giants yeah. has been sentenced to two years in prison, so he's going away for that, um, for shooting himself in the leg at a nightclub. For those of you outside of New York, you might not remember the story, but um, it is almost comical that, that something like that has happened and taken away this man's career, but, yeah. you know, he went out to the nightclub here in New York and he had a gun in his pocket. Well, you know how the club gets, you're dipping it and doing it, next thing you go, pow! <laughs> But that, oh, that didn't happen <laughs> like that. It did too, you? in my mind. <laughs> this big Jennifer Lopez hubbub. Have you heard what's going on with her? She did a private concert in Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan, uh, and she sang happy birthday to the president. Well, it sounds innocent off the top, but the problem is the country has been named one of the most repressive countries in the world, or the government in the world. The government is very repressive, and Jennifer Lopez has since apologized no word on whether she gave back the $1.5 million. <laughs> Other celebrities who've performed uh, under such conditions include 50 Cent, Mariah Carey, Usher, and Beyonce. In my mind, I think that, um, that Mariah Carey probably donated to a lamb fund someplace. We just, never, we just never heard about it. She doesn't seem like the type that would keep the money if she found out that she sang you know, for the wrong people. 50 Cent probably still doesn't know, and then... <laughs> And, and, and to me, and, and Usher is selfish, so he, he, he kept the money and will still go back and perform. This is all in my mind, in my mind, in my mind. The big story this morning, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. Oh. Officially getting divorced. I wish, I wish them well, and they certainly did have a good run 10 years. Probably the only person happy now in my mind. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Last time you were here, <laughs> you said you were totally single. I was. And I didn't pry. We broke up for a little bit. Oh, mm hmm. Yeah. And we've done that a couple times. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> like, how does that work? It, well, in my mind. Just, yeah, when, okay. When you, in my mind. <laughs> I would love to hear what happens in your mind. When you, when you fight with a man and break up. Yeah. He's running out of the house with vases crashing at the front door. No, 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 it's not that dramatic. Okay. No. So you broke up. It was kind of like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get back together. So bye. Hi. <laughs> so I know you're super competitive. You didn't get this far by not being super competitive. <laughs> okay. In my mind. <laughs> and, and we've also played games here on the show yes, before yes. and you're really competitive. Okay, that's true. Have you ever like put on a rubber nose and a pair of sunglasses and a hat and gone to check out the competition? Well, I, before, I even signed my deal to go to Vegas. When they were offering it to me, okay. they were like, boy, we want you to come do this. I went and saw a bunch of shows. Uh -huh. And I saw everybody. Uh -huh. I didn't see Mariah because at the time she wasn't playing. She hadn't started yet. Who? No, I'm playing because that's what Mariah said about Jennifer one time. I'm not trying to start anything. Just... <laughs> she, she does say that. Yeah, she She's does. She's forgetful, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know that modeling show hosted by Naomi Campbell called The Face? It's on Oxygen, and it's in its second season. It's in its second season. There's this contestant who says that she needs a psychiatric help because Naomi Campbell has bullied her. There's the contestant. Here's what um, Kira says. Naomi hates Russians. She's an amazing woman, but it's hard to work with her. Uh, she put all her negative energy on me after filming ended. They sent me to the doctors. I'm still recovering. The network is still paying for my psychiatrist. Okay. Okay, first of all, 
In my mind, I believe that Naomi has been nothing but trouble since the beginning regarding behind the scenes. She's got something going on up here. She's got a problem and she's never sought help. And that's fine. But we love her because she's endlessly gorgeous, slightly crazy, ticky boom. <laughs> but she's not our friend, so she's fun to watch and read about. Hello, beautiful flats. I love you. Teeter gently. I, I am not falling. I am so aware of like the pain of like back, knees and what. And when you see me do this, it's cause I don't have the arthritis. And I think that this keeps it away. <laughs> I don't know, in my mind, in my mind. Shut up. When you get to my age, you'll know. You know, but keeping it away. The judge granted Kim and Chris a divorce. It's a victory for Kim. According to TMZ, Kim won't have to pay Chris a dime. Although in the back of my mind, I think that Kardashians might have slipped him a little something, something just to go away. Uh, you know, Chris initially was demanding $7 million from her on account of fraud. Chris also uh, dropped his demands for the annulment based on fraud. So now they're both considered divorcees. Chris was uh, reportedly worried about going to trial because it would jeopardize his team. The Nets ha are in the playoffs. You know, they haven't been in the playoffs in like 20 years. But I think it wasn't Chris um, who did it. It was probably the captain of the team, the owner of the team, and all of his teammates went over to him and basically yoked him up in the corner in my mind and probably said, look, you settle this mess right away because if you mess up this playoff for us, you're going to get the wedgie of life in, in, in the room, in the uh, dressing room. For the past few years, Kim and Kanye have been renovating this mansion in Calabasas, mm -hmm. like gut renovation. They've been working with this interior designer, Sandy Gallen. He's like designer to the stars. They get all the furniture moved in. Kim's like, this nightmare's over. I'm going to have a house now. Kanye walks in, takes one look at the furniture, is like, I hate it all. Send it this all back. This is the eccentricity. <gasps> Send it, it back. If you've ever gone through any kind of renovation, you just want it to be over. You just want it to be settled. This is all in avoidance of being a real married couple. Do you understand? Oh. Like, in, in my mind, <laughs> in my mind, they keep these projects going so that, okay, now I can't live in the house because there's no furniture. I've got to move back to my mom, so we can't wow. live like a real married couple because we're not a real married couple. <laughs> but the kids are cute. There's some damning accusations about Courtney Love, and they're being spelled out in a new tell-all book. The book is not saying anything that we don't already know <laughs> or could assume, allegedly. According to TMZ, Jessica has made several accusations that Courtney is still abusing cocaine and prescription drugs. Sit down, Jessica. <laughs> Courtney already admitted this stuff in an online chat, and we talked about it here on Hot Topics. She says she occasionally, P.S. occasionally means more than occasionally, <laughs> in my mind, drinks a glass of wine, does a bump of coke, Look, loves to pop her pills, Adderall, Xanax, Abilify, and Sonetta. Hot felon Jeremy Meeks better not mess this up for us. I mean him. He's dating this top shop heiress, uh, Chloe Green. And her family's got a lot of money. Well, Jeremy, this is what you need to do. You need to poke a hole in that condom. <laughs> In my mind, don't do what I say. Oops, I didn't mean for that to come out. All I'm saying is that you need to get her pregnant immediately. Forget, forget the wedding, just lock down the whole situation. And Dr. Cosby, you should be ashamed because you built such a great legacy, you know? And you were like one of the first, um, you know, father figures in our community who told, you know, young boys to pull their pants up and all this almighty stuff that you talked. And now your whole legacy has been torpedoed by quaaludes and 45 women. Oh. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean to laugh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In my head, I was thinking. <laughs> Do you watch SpongeBob? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, just one joke, please don't hate me. Does it, Bill Cosby's nose remind you of Squidward's <laughs> nose? <It's> like, <laughs> just like, like, I'm just saying. Okay, sorry. Mariah Carey has a new man. At least that's what she wants you to believe. 
because I know what I believe. So Mariah reportedly is dating her longtime friend, the director, Brett Ratner. Yes, they do look cozy. He's got on the crown because it's his birthday. Um, do, do I think that this is a real, real relationship? I hope not. <laughs> look, I don't know the man. I've never met him, but, but I've read a lot of different things about him, and they're not necessarily the nicest things. Um, um, he re you know who he reminds me of? Like, he reminds me of... Joe Francis, like kind of oily and slimy. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, like, like he's, he's like Joe Francis, like in my mind. We finally have a clear picture for you of Nick Tatton, Cannon's Mariah tattoo on his back. This is how it looks. I, um, I, I mean, I don't like the tattoo. I mean, it's, it's nice artwork. You know, if you're into tats, it's a nice artwork, and he has a nice canvas to put it on. Uh, you know, he's got a nice little body over there. But, you know, I guess maybe I don't like it because, first of all, I'm not a huge tattoo person, but the other thing is, is that he got it to cover the big Mariah. He shouldn't have gotten the big Mariah to begin with. <laughs> Look, okay, so, they, they were dating for, like, three days. And, no, no, hold on, hold on. They were dating for like three days. First of all, they met back in 2005. He presented her with the surfboard at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Award. You know, the surfboard is the award. All right. So then they, they met up years later, and they, they dated for like three days, and she asked him to be the love interest in some music video that she was about to film in Antigua. So everybody gets on the private plane, and they start flying down to Antigua. When Mariah tells the ca um, captain... Before we get to Antigua, stop at Disney. I want to fly the Tower of Terror. <laughs> Look, that's a very random cuckoo thing, but you can see, like, the set siders were saying, Nick just fell under her power and presence, you know? I mean, in addition to being that nice-looking woman, she was just able to click her finger, and the captain steered the wheel and <laughs> headed down to Disney. And they get on the ride. And then they leave, they go right back to the private plane where the plane has to sit on the runway for five hours. Five hours, you ask? Yes, because she bought her dog, Jack, on, on, you know, to go to Antigua and have fun. Well, turns out, Antigua doesn't let you bring dogs in. So, for five hours, while Nick and Mariah are held up back in the, in the back bedroom, where I'm, where I'm sure she's transifying him even more, Look, 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 look. Look, so her, her minions are scrambling in the front of the plane trying to figure out, you know, how are we gonna get this dog there? So they tap on her door. Yes, darling. <laughs> and, and one of her minions says, um, Mariah, they're not letting this happen. And Mariah says, call the prime minister. <laughs> they called the prime minister and he said no too. <laughs> so... I'm sure Nick is still transified by all this, you know, high-powered mess going on, you know? I mean, he's, he's successful, but he's not that successful. <laughs> you, you know, to, you know to, that, to that point. So, so then um, she had to tell, Mariah told one of the minions, well, then get on the, get on the smaller plane <laughs> with the dog and fly him back to New York. And then, after five hours of sitting and going through, you know, this dog thing, they flew off to Antigua, where I'm sure they had more of a high-powered time. So, I'm sure, at that point, Nick was like, get me the biggest engagement ring I can afford <laughs> and the biggest tattoo you can find. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right, but in my mind, that's how it went down. <laughs> He was seduced by her power, and that's why the tattoo's so big.